So what are you doing? I just went grocery shopping and I put in everything in its place. In its place? Why, what's up with the box? Boxes are bulky. Things don't fit well in boxes. Especially our freezer pizzas. They're too big for our freezer. But the pizza fits perfectly. Huh. Get rid of a lot of garbage up front. Save space. All our cans, non-perishables here. Still have to fit all that stuff someplace. What do you think, Trixie? This place needs a beach. Hello, I'm Jacqueline, and this is Nick. We invite you to join us and our dog Trixie on our unique journey as we pack everything up, move into our camper, travel to our favorite destinations, and begin living in the now. Cause I've got no more expectations Gonna take my ass across the nation Been doing this far too long All the time I spend is now too far gone Time to change the pace and lose the face I put on for everyone else Embrace the change and play the game And do everything for myself So we are attempting actually that spot Does that say reserved or something? I don't think so, they're numbered. Spot my party. Just a maybe. It looks wider. I don't know if I can make that turn though. No, I don't think so. Today we're at Hermosa Beach, which is not RV and camper friendly towards parking lots or street parking. We had a bit of trouble finding a, a parking spot today. They're very narrow and we don't really fit. But we finally found one next to a crosswalk that gave us a little extra room we needed. Nick's on a video conference with his brother about music and I'm walking down to the beach. is Chris, Nick's younger brother, and an aspiring musician. <laughs> Nick has been helping to coach him into recording his self-written and performed songs for his very first album. In fact, we borrowed his original No More Expectations for our video not opener because not only does it suit our theme, like but we the truly think it's amazing. <laughs> Doing good. Way faster on those. Pull me. Hey. Hey. Got my sled dog over here. She's not pulling very hard though. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Good girl! Good girl! Good job. 
Alright, so today we're gonna repair this old turf board. Yeah, a bite out of here and a bite out of here and a bite out of here and it was all waterlogged. I left it up on the roof for a week to dry out. Put some solar reds on it and we're gonna sand it down. Get my new board, baby. Put some wax on it. Good to go. What are you contemplating? Watching. Watching what? Surfing. Surfing. Learning. Tubular. Tubular, dude. Located at the end of the Manhattan Pier, you will find the Roundhouse Aquarium. This nonprofit is free to enter and has a mission to engage visitors through hands on interactive experiences. They host classes, parties, and camps educating and inspiring more than 300,000 people every year to become good stewards of our environment. Even with COVID, they continue their mission with smaller informative displays outside of the aquarium on the pier. So us being right here on the pier, we're in a really great spot because we are right in the middle of a pathway for a lot of different things. The biggest one that we focus on here is this skull. This is from a bottlenose dolphin. So, they're one of the most common dolphins that we see here off the coast of California. This is another marine mammal that we see here off the coast of California. It's loud, it is very adorable to look at, they're very playful animals, but in no way should you feed them. It's a California sea lion. The last thing here is this beautiful skull. It is a beast. Uh, it is not an animal that we see down here in the south of our California coast. You find this up towards Santa Cruz, San Francisco. This is a northern elephant seal skull. What we now believe is that many early explorers and early sailors would find elephant seal skulls because they're fairly widespread throughout both the northern and southern hemisphere. And they would say that they were cyclops skulls because it looks like this is one big eye socket. And so they would tell stories about cyclops all across ancient civilizations. And that's part of why we think that those stories and those myths translate across. And the first drama I'm going to go ahead and show you is a bull shark. And so this is its jaw. If I go ahead and flip it over, you can actually see it has about six to seven rows of teeth. And then the next one is a lemon shark. It's, as you can tell, it's going to be a little bit smaller. But a cool thing is you can see it only has about three to four rows of teeth. And so with that, the great white sharks, right now we're actually in great white shark season here. One of the cool things is the juvenile white sharks are actually migrating up north from the Sea of Cortez, which is where they're born. A few that lay eggs are our swell sharks here. This is known in ancient folklore as the mermaid's purse. And so this one is actually from a bullhead shark. And the unique thing about this is if you ever see a corkscrew like egg, then you know it's a bullhead shark. And this is actually the pectoral fin on the right side of a blue shark. So here you can see where it attached with all the muscle. You can even see when it died, how it goes into a straight state. You can see it wrinkled here, but then it smooths out. And that's because this is mainly carnivore. Yeah, so we start with our phytoplankton that gives the food to the krill that feeds the whales. This whale poop is really good fertilizer for the kelp, which of course produces the oxygen for us to breathe. Circle of life. Yep, the circle of life. It's a beautiful thing. Sorrows will be here by dawn 